and welcome to the show you're watching Tech24. I'm Julia Seeger. As the 12th edition of the International Forum on Cybersecurity has come to an end in the city of Lille, we tell you what types of cyber attacks are on the rise and how hackers are still using the art of deception to get hold of your confidential information. And in Test24, we try a rover by Invert Robotics. It offers remote visual inspections for confined areas, a great asset for many industries. In 2019, researchers found that if just 20% of automated vehicles were, were stopped remotely, an area like Manhattan would grind to a complete halt. Indeed, as experts continue to prepare for a world where connected cars roam the streets, they're forecasting increased risk for major security breaches, as our reporter Zora Ben Miloud and Thomas Waterhouse explain. They're more and more intelligent and increasingly autonomous. But connected cars are also driving in the hacker's fast lane. With the rollout of 5G technology, taking control of a vehicle remotely is becoming child's play for the more seasoned cyber criminal. There are some really simple things which are possible. With a control unit like this one, which costs 200 euros, and with a simple aerial, you can connect to the radio software. The threat is far from new. The company Upstream Security says over 260 security breaches on vehicles have been reported in the past decade, with a quarter of attacks exploiting mobile apps or cloud servers. In 2015, for example, two security researchers showed how easy it was for hackers to take control of a Jeep Cherokee using the car's online entertainment system a revelation which prompted Fiat Chrysler to recall 1.4 million vehicles. The car industry has taken stock and manufacturers now factor in cyber security from the very first blueprint stage of design. The Gardnox Secure Network Orchestrator. Five years ago, the Israeli company Gardnox was set up to find solutions. Its CEO believes potential hacking scenarios could be extreme. Let's take an example of a large truck that carries fuel. And the hacker is just penetrating to this uh, truck and just taking control and throw it to the ditch or taking control and driving it into a certain building. It's, I don't know, it's 9-11 but on wheels. With the risks so high, automobile security experts say that when we go car shopping in the future, we should be thinking less about the look we want and more about the likelihood our chosen vehicle will be hacked. Because in the next three years, 775 million cars out and about on our roads will be connected and a growing number of them will be self-driving. Well, to speak about the main cyber trends, I'm now joined in the studio by Amélie Reeves, a cybersecurity consultant at the CEIS. Thank you very much indeed for being with us today. Thanks for having me, Julia. So what are the main trends we're witnessing in terms of attacks? Well, the main trends, I think, is a significant rise in cybercrime, as in a more, inter more interconnected world, as we've just seen. And in particular, what we're seeing is a rise in low technology, quite basically technologically uh, 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 attacks um, such as ransomware or phishing, for instance, uh, which don't need, don't, do not need a lot of technical skills, but who can have devastating impacts. Think of the ransomware attacks against the city of Baltimore in the US, or against the company Altron in France, or even against Eurofins. So right, huge example. financial losses, as we can Absolutely. see here. But most importantly, uh, consequences are no longer only financial. They're also becoming more and more concrete, more and more tangible for the general public. Uh, think of the recent ransomware attacks against hospitals in the UK, for instance, or even in Rouen in France, where medics have been unable to access uh, patients' uh, medical records, for instance, or where equipment was disrupted or even shut down. Um, so I think this really contributes to raising awareness among the general public and the population. And something um, that contributes to the success of these attacks or that they are mostly facilitated by uh, inappropriate or risky human behavior and only uh, a very basic, easy uh, measures of cyber hygiene could really uh, reduce or mitigate the risks. 
Now, we're also seeing a wave of attacks perpetrated by mafias and state-sponsored groups. Yes, absolutely. I mean, this is something that exists, that has been existing quite for, for a while, but um, it is uh, attacks that with more uh, political or geopolitical coloring uh, that aim at destabilizing, disrupting, stealing information, espionage as well. Uh, there are attacks called APT, for instance, Advanced Persistent Threats, uh, where the, the objective is to get into an organization system and where they can remain undetected and unnoticed for quite a while in order to uh, expand as much as possible and to have the most devastating uh, effect or to collect uh, and absorb information. So, Admini, tell us, how are um, companies and even states responding to these attacks? Are there any technologies that are helping in that way? Sure. I mean, unsurprisingly, most of the technologies today are by, based on artificial intelligence, uh, especially in security operation centers when they can help uh, automatize, automatizing some of the tasks, uh, specifically to detect and react to cyber attacks, to help analysts and operators focus on more complex uh, tasks, for instance. Um, but also uh, other solutions are purely human. I mentioned earlier that uh, humans are the, the sometimes the weakest link, but they can also be the strongest link and really contribute to cybersecurity through appropriate uh, cyber hygiene and specific measures. So humans aren't replacing machines quite yet. Thank you very much, Amélie Reeves from the CEIS. Many thanks, Julia. So while many hackers operate online by breaching security, many others still operate with the age-old tactics of exploiting human flaws to achieve a malicious objective. Cyber criminals often induce victims to break protocol and hand over their confidential information, allowing for more targeted attacks. It's now known as social engineering. Well, for more on this, let's welcome our in-house expert, Dan and Jay Cattlecar. So Dan, what on earth is social engineering? Well, Julia, social engineering is an act of tricking someone into divulging information, uh, sensitive information. It could be about individuals, about organizations, or their computer systems. Now, the reason why it's called social engineering because it involves social skills, that is, human interactions. Now, there are different forms of social engineering attacks, like uh, phishing, which involves uh, sending uh, malicious codes via emails or just creating these malicious websites or also wishing, which involves voice communications. Well, actually, Tech24 met with one of the most accomplished brain hackers, Rachel Toback. She gives us a compelling example of how she could hack any one of us. One example that you can think of of social engineering that I would use is I might see a picture that you've posted at your work. Let's say you have a balloon because it's your birthday and somebody gave you a gift. In the background of that picture, I can see your computer, your workstation. So I know all the software that you run. Now that I see that and I know your interests, let's say on your desk you have a few bobbleheads and some pictures of your children and dogs, maybe I'm going to call you and when I call you, pretending to be from IT support, I have a, the sound of a dog barking in the background from YouTube. I contact you and I tell you that I need you to check on your antivirus software to make sure everything's up to date. I already know what antivirus software you're running because I can see that icon in the background of that photograph. Now that I know that, I can tailor my malware to be able to gain access to your computer and circumvent your antivirus software because I know what it is, I can get you to confirm it over the phone and tailor my malware. And it's time for Test 24. And we're very pleased to showcase a rover coming straight from New Zealand, actually from the city of Christchurch. It's a small robot that inspects confined areas in industrial equipments. It's actually going to make its way on the set of Tech 24. It's really cute. It actually looks like Wally. -E. Well, yes, it's cute and it's very useful because, first of all, it can move in both the vertical as well as the horizontal direction. And it can also move in an upside down uh, position. Now, the biggest advantage is that this robot is meant for non-magnetic surfaces. There are robots that can inspect magnetic surfaces, but this does for non-magnetic surfaces by using uh, a vacuum, basically. So here at the bottom, you'll see there are four suction pads. Right. And inside the robot, there's a vacuum pump that keeps on sucking air. And it's, but it's not a static uh, suction. These are not static suction caps. These are sliding suction caps. So even if, if the robot moves, the vacuum is still generated. And this gives it a big advantage to climb any surface. So for example, it has useful applications in uh, food processing industries. It has useful applications in petrochemical. And now it has found 
an application in the aircraft maintenance industry as well. So it can inspect uh, the fuselage of an aircraft and it can detect the smallest of cracks, the smallest of faults up to uh, the size of 60 microns, which is almost uh, the width of uh, human hair. Uh, it can also detect pores, it can also detect food residue. And uh, right now you see there's this cord that extends up to 50 meters. Uh, it needs to be controlled from a central, uh, big, there's a giant controller. Uh, so it can extend up to 50 meters, which is 150 feet. But in the future, the company is aiming to make it uh, wireless basically, so it can move on its own. And as you can see here, there's this uh, camera on the top. It's an HD camera that can zoom in 30 times. And at the bottom, at the base of this robot, there's another camera, which as it moves, it scans all these faults and it relays all the all the con the images basically in real time so you can really find out what's going on it's not just cracks but it can it can also tell you if there's been some discoloration or right. there's been a change of form or shape Dan and Jay Cattlecar, thank you very much indeed for that. Thank you for also for this very cute robot. That brings us to the end of this week's edition of Tech24, but you can watch it again on our website, France24.com. See you soon. <laughs>